The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of the Catholic TV Network. Thanks for joining us for Mass on this fourth Sunday of Advent. And tomorrow is Christmas. We hope you'll join us again. Cardinal Sean will be with us to celebrate Mass for Christmas Day from the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. But today, on this Christmas Eve, Father Michael White is with us and Tom Corcoran, their authors of a new book in a series, We Built Faith, a handbook for skeptical Catholics, which we all are now and again. You can get a copy at Ave Maria Press. Father Michael, great to see you, great to be with you. Could you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, Bishop. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let's acknowledge our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord our God, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to affect them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom Firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic, prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that some scholars say there were 40 direct prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus, 40 predictions about the coming of Christ, hundreds of years before he lived, that he would be born miraculously, where he would be born, into what family he would be born, his name, what he would do, and how he would fulfill God's great big plan. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and this year, the fourth week of Advent, will only last a matter of hours until later this afternoon when we begin the celebration of Christmas. And yet, the readings this morning have a great deal to tell us about the prophecies of Jesus for our celebration of Christmas. In our first reading, the Lord tells Nathan the prophet to tell David the king that he will establish his kingdom 
as an everlasting one. His heirs will rule forever. His throne will never come to an end. So the prophecy establish, establishes the royal house of David, an heir, a kingdom. They're astonishing promises when you think about it. And today's gospel reveals the fulfillment of all those promises. The angel Gabriel makes announcement to the virgin, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall name him Jesus. He will be great, the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. In this single announcement, all the prophecies are fulfilled, that a baby will be born miraculously, where he would be born, into which particular family, that he will sit on the throne of King David, and that he will rule forever. The fourth Sunday of Advent truly celebrates the advent of God's great big plan, promised for ages and ages and brought to final fulfillment in a single angelic announcement, or rather, not quite fulfillment, because beyond the prophetic and angelic visions and promises is Mary's decision to believe in those visions and promises and cooperate with God's plan or not. Everything depended on her answer. And of course, we know what happened. As we enter this celebration and the season of Christmas, we too face a choice. Like Mary, will we believe in those visions and promises of Scripture? Will we cooperate with God's plan? And our answer comes not in words, but in our actions and attitude this Christmas. Will our joy at Christ's coming move us to greater charity, increased efforts at prayer, even more simply, a cheerful disposition this Christmas? Think about it. After all, Advent is almost over. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Confident that God hears us in our need, we turn to him in prayer. That Christ, the giver of all good gifts, may fill the Pope, our bishops, and the whole order of bishops with spiritual gifts and graces. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may establish justice and lasting peace among nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ, the Good Shepherd, may guide the minds of those who govern us to promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ, the Redeemer, may banish disease, disease drive out hunger, and ward off every affliction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, may raise up our beloved deceased in life and light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear these prayers and those we hold in our hearts. Answer them according to Christ our Lord.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our prayer and offering. Make it acceptable to you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed, Holy Lord, the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, 
that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to a worthy celebration of your son's nativity. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of my good friend, Bishop Bob Reed, and everybody here at Catholic TV, I wish you a blessed nativity. And if you'll bow your heads now, I'll share with you God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he bless you this day and throughout the coming season of Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. have worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Bishop Reed, the Catholic TV Network, P.O. Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Join us anytime on Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.